Oh, praise the Lord, Father, in Jesus' name. I thank you for this word today. Holy Spirit, you're welcome here in this place of worship. You're welcome here in this home. You're welcome here in our schools, our precincts, our police officers, our prisons, our places of, of worship, our places of entertainment. We welcome you in our places of, of business. And I thank you so much for the word today. I pray that every word is Holy Spirit led, filled with love, compassion, liberty, and humility. Pray that you just open our eyes, ears, spirits to receive today. And I thank you that every person who hears this is, is being transformed by your words that you're speaking to them. In Jesus' name, amen. There is so much about the Holy Spirit that when when you begin to uncover who he is, that your life will change. In a previous video, I shared about who the Holy Spirit is. And the Holy Spirit is the voice of God, and the Holy Spirit speaks. The Holy Spirit is a man, and the Holy Spirit is a person. There are so many things that the Holy Spirit does and many roles we might say that that he has taken on as an advocate, as a counselor, as an intercessor, and many other things that we either are not taught or we don't understand or that we just disregard. Today I want to get into the language of the Holy Spirit. And as I started examining the language of the Holy Spirit, everything around me began to change. Not just, and it really it wasn't that everything else changed, it was that the transformation within me was in a position to see the manifestation of God everywhere. And that, that was something that was so profound. And so as, as I'm going to be in Genesis 1, I'm not going to be going through all the scripture that we went through last time. You can, you can go back and review that particular video. But there's something that, that when I was reading specific to Genesis 1 that, that I found very profound. Now, in Genesis 1, 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So we know God. So there's no, I mean, that just settles that. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. So the Holy Spirit was there from the beginning. When I started studying about the role of the Holy Spirit in the language and who he is, I started just going through Genesis 1, and these are a few things that I found. God said... 11 times and uh, there might be more I may have missed one but I counted 11 times God said God saw seven times God created four times God set one time God made three times God called three times and God blessed two times now It's 31. I wanted to know if there was if if collectively if that number would have some meaning. However, it it may, and I just don't know. But bottom line is this: these are all the things that occurred just in Genesis one. God saw that it was that it was very good. God created. God said. God God set. God made. God 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 did all of these things, and the Holy Spirit was right there. I've already shared with you that the Holy Spirit is the voice of God. Now, if we, and, and this is a little bit of a review, but you can write this down. In, in Genesis 1 2, it's plural, God. And then Genesis 2 26 is also in the plurality of God. It's Genesis 2 26, where whenever there's a reference to um, us, then we begin to see that that reference is us. And I believe that it's 226, but wait a second. I want to make sure that I give you the correct, the correct scripture. Let's 
because I knew something wasn't right. It's not 226. It is um, 322. Sorry, that's what it is. 322, and the Lord God said the man has now become like one of us. Us is the plural. So when we're looking at that, and there's the other, the other scriptures as well that reference that reference that so we know that if there is more than one if there's one it's singular because it's plural there'd be more than one so the Holy Spirit was there is the voice the the voice head of of God so when we grasp that the Holy Spirit is always there is speaking is communicating we will begin to understand how how it even occurred without the disciples not even being aware which when we look today how often are we aware that the Holy Spirit is speaking I'd like you to turn to Luke Luke chapter 9 and verse 33 Okay, so 9.33 reads this in the King James, And it happened as they were parting from him that Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here, and let us make three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. In the NIV, as the two men were leaving Jesus, Peter said to him, Master, it is good for us to be there. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what he was saying. Huh. How often do we know what, what we are saying? How often are we communicating with words not knowing what words we speak? How often do we miss, because of our lack of understanding, the words that we speak? And how often do we just speak that which we don't even know and then have a misunderstanding? We, we can see that Peter, he didn't know what he was saying, but the Holy Spirit did. The language that we speak reveals so much. And when we look at the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit speaks and when we look at the means in which the Holy Spirit speaks and what his roles are begins to change who do you think taught the the whales how to speak or the birds or the elephants how is it that we as humans, and we're going to get to the mindset in just a second, but how is it that we as humans are so intellectual, yet we can't figure out as mankind why the elephants and all the animals are running before the tsunami hits? The animals are not dumb. The animals also are part of God's creation. And when we start examining how animals move and how they interact, they don't even have what we do as mankind, but yet are able to move and complete tasks and, and operate in a way that mankind can't comprehend in all its intellectual ascent. So when we begin to examine that the language of the Holy Spirit is the voice of the earth, we begin to see how everything is orchestrated. We begin to see the dangers of this AI that they keep pushing, that, that the advancements that mankind is creating in even, even in other countries, they're creating like these, these sex robots and they're creating these, these dolls that look like women to replace women. And, and they're creating all of these things. Mankind does not realize that mankind is wiping itself off the face of the earth and, and, and priding themselves on doing so. 
There is no language of the Holy Spirit through a robot. That's the stupidest thing in the world to be creating a, a, a fake ideology of life and then thinking that there's going to be anything sustainable in it. It is, it is the exact opposite of God in that what God creates is sustainable for the purpose of procreating. Hello, God created man and woman to procreate. Anything that goes against God's plan of procreation in whatever way or form is not God's plan. We can see this. Everything is to multiply and replenish the earth. Um, if you're not doing that because... You're not doing that because you would disagree with God's word. We begin to see how, how everything gets stunted. When there's no natural growth, things get stunted. When we begin to see the advancements that we are taking as a society, we, we can then begin to understand to the downfall that it is. It is removing the spirit of God. It is removing God to create something that people are priding themselves on. And there already is the AI religion. They're trying to create their own religion with their own God so that people can worship a robot religion. Like, what is wrong with people? That, that we're trying to uh, worship a non-existent or a, an existing man-made devil, if you will, because anything not of God is not of God, and then call it something, it's no purity in it. When, when we look at the Holy Spirit and everything that the Holy Spirit is and what our society was created through, through God to be and through the, through the voice of the Holy Spirit, we begin to see the love, the peace, the joy. We begin to see the manifestation of, of what God created. And we know in Galatians, the fruit of the Spirit is love and God is love. We begin to come full circle from Genesis to, to Revelation. When we start getting outside of, of what God God has intended and God's perfect will plan and and we know to worship him alone and we can see it in second Thessalonians and we begin to look at all of these things we have to really recognize that when we move in that realm we're removing the Holy Spirit when we remove the Holy Spirit we become dead and we can see there are many dead churches as well as people walking around never mind the Nephilim I mean that's a whole other thing so when we understand the language of the Holy Spirit, it changes how you see everything. The language of the Holy Spirit is the voice of the earth all over anywhere you go, the northeast, west, and south. Turn with me to the right, to the book of Romans. And this scripture is one that I know that many have, have heard and rely on. And, and Romans 12, and I want to show you something in this scripture. This is another one that I've had like one of these love-hate relationships with like Jeremiah 29, 11. you got to read through 14 to get the whole gist of it. Start in one. Beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. On the NIV, it reads a little bit different. Love to. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, perf His good pleasing, and perfect will. Okay, so there's... There's a manner in which we are to operate, and I'm gonna I'm gonna show my point just one second. But we're we're commanded do not conform to the pattern of this world, which means there's a pattern of the world. So we're told to not conform to it, kind of like I think it was the Canaanites. Don't conform. 
don't conform. We see the people that are following this are the Muslims. They're following this. They don't conform. We're not conforming to your laws. We are not eating that. We don't follow that law. That We don't care where we are. Our law is what we follow. We are nonconformists. This is what we do, and that's how we do it. And there is no two ways about this. We have no tolerance. We are not breaking this, that, 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 that. We can see it all over. They don't care what any other law segment of the population think. They don't care. And many say, well, you yeah. We already know this, but bottom line is this, they're not conforming to the pattern of the world. They set their own pattern, and that's what they follow. They're all in. It's just, we need to get all in. I mean, seriously, Christians have kind of, you know, done a little too much in the name of tolerance and have become doormats and, and wondering, like, what's happening? Well, look around, and I can testify being teaching in the college universities that there is no difference in a, col in a Christian college and a secular college. None. It is, it's the same, it's one and the same, bend over backwards, we'll give you this, we know we're too Catholic for you, so let's bring in the Muslims and change our stuff, we know we're a little bit too Christian, and because we don't want to offend you, we're going to, you know, we'll, we'll take out these celebrations that we have, and, and we'll allow your prayers over the loudspeakers all over our campus five times a day, because we don't want to offend you. Stand for something. Do not conform to the ways of the world. The pattern of the world, it's already set up. Don't conform to it. You have a command to not do so. When we start conforming to the ways of the world, it opens up a spirit of compromise. When a spirit of compromise is open, then things that aren't funny become funny. Kind of like Lucifer TV program that was just renewed for the fourth season. We begin to, to find things funny, which is, a, which is not funny, but then when you're the one that not laughs at what isn't funny, then you become, you become the one they make fun of. Super. But you see, the spirit of compromise very, very slowly begins to creep in. When you, start, when you start following the ways and the patterns of the world, your life will begin to change. What will happen is that as you begin to get involved in these patterns of the world, oh, this is cool, you need to do this, da 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 da, -da. wear this, don't do this, blah, blah, whatever the world says. You begin to lose your hearing from the Holy Spirit because there's no room for him. You've chosen the pattern of the world versus the pattern of the ever-living God moving in and through your life. Not a good place to be in. But so we see here, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. When, you're, when you start growing in wisdom and you start being led by the Holy Spirit, the, the voice and the language of the Holy Spirit will become more pronounced. Your increase in hearing will be more evident. And it won't just be in hearing and hearing. You will begin to see it and it will manifest through you. But here's the thing. It says then. See, when people say, oh, there's no judgment. Don't, don't judge. Don't judge. Don't judge me. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm. Okay, well, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. But before, when, when we're in the ways of the world, there's no way to test and judge it because there's no standard. The world has no standard, let's just be clear. Anything is good at any given time until it's not, and then there'll be something it's replaced with. This is why this is this word of God is the only way, the only truth, the only life, and nobody gets to the Father except through Jesus Christ. And if people are offended by that, then they can take their offense and go, go wherever they need to go with it. This word does not change because we don't like how it makes us feel. When, when we start operating in the pattern of the world, the pattern of the world will live you, have you living based upon your emotions. How does it make you feel? Look at the advertising. Oh, that, oh you know, you're going to feel so great driving this car and you're going to get the pretty woman when you drink that drink. No, you won't. You'll get drunk and she'll look prettier and then you'll be worse off than you were before you drank anything. It's all deception. When we start getting led away by our emotions and not being renewed in our mind and not being led by the Holy Spirit, we start becoming what are called carnal Christians, trying to be a Christian, but yet it's so carnal that you can't tell. So, so we begin to see that we have to go through this process of, of moving ourselves to be in that place to understand and hear from the Holy Spirit but recognize this, is that when we have a carnal mind, when we have a mind that is reprobate, that when we have a body that is moved away from God, then we, we, we stunt our vocabulary in the spirit. We begin to lose out on the nature of language, of, of what and how he speaks. When, when we begin to overcome our mind, which is the hardest thing, and I know the, I know many of you watching this have, have heard me say this before, that, that you know, overcoming yourself is the hardest thing you'll ever do. 
And walking with Jesus Christ is not easy because what happens is that we want to put Jesus into our feel-good basket that we only want to hear him tell us how great we are, even though we're living sinful lives and, th and justifying it in, in whatever way instead of realizing we're the ones that need to show up to the party, his party. Jesus didn't come to put us in a box of religion. He came to set the captives free. So when, when, we, when we understand overcoming our mind, we begin to understand that without the mind, language is not received. I want to repeat that because I'm going to take you somewhere with this. When, if we don't overcome the mind and without the mind, language cannot be received. When you examine your vocabulary, we see that those with a smaller vocabulary perceive and understand less. When, when we begin to grow in our vocabulary, we begin to grow and can understand more things. I remember as a kid, I was, <laughs> I was a little bit of a, a geek in, in many ways. And, and the school that I was in, there were only 12 of us in, in my class. It was this private, this, this private school. And, and, uh, for fun, we would pull out a word from, from an encyclopedia, and, and every day it was like this goal to see how many times we could use one word in all of our sentences. And it was so we could grow a vocabulary. And, and so I learned very, very young reading and writing and spelling and spelling bee champ and all of these things. But within that, the intellect still does not compare to the Holy Spirit. I had to overcome my mind and the pride of intellect and the rationalization and the, and the reasoning because in my mind I could reason, but without wisdom, without the voice of the Holy Spirit, without the language of the Holy Spirit, there's no room for anything else to be heard. And so, so when we look at, at the vocabulary and we look at wisdom and as we ask the Lord, fill me with wisdom because Solomon tells us, get wisdom. When we begin to walk in wisdom, the voice of the Holy Spirit will be more pronounced. We'll be in a better position to move about and understand, even though we lean not on our own understanding or our intellect, things begin, things begin to change. For those that say that the Holy Spirit is not for today, you've, you've lost your biggest ally. You lost what Jesus left you. Jesus says in John, my peace I give you, not as the world gives, but as, as I give, I give you my peace. And, and he tells us that I leave you with an advocate or a comforter. The, the Holy Spirit's an intercessor. The Holy Spirit speaks. The Holy Spirit is, is waiting and he's gentle and, and he's easily grieved and he's easily offended and he can be insulted and he can be lied to. And the Holy Spirit is the greatest gift that any of us have ever been given and so it is it is really an insult when people say the holy spirit's not for today well then get out of that denomination and and and, and read god's word because it didn't say that he only left his holy spirit at that particular time and then and then it's like it's only for an authorized time you know you see the ads authorized it's only valid you know it's only valid till three days after pentecost it's only valid you know for the azusa revivals it's only valid no not valid for today you missed that code Mm -mm. You can't even get a QRC code anymore because it's not valid either. Holy Spirit is for today. The Holy Spirit is for today. The Holy Spirit speaks. And the Holy Spirit wants to be in communication with you and you with him. When, when you begin to recognize this, you will find that you won't need to be searching for that earthly man or that earthly woman to fulfill everything. You will recognize that everything you have and what you need is in the Holy Spirit. Do we need fellowship? Yes. So don't send them email about that. We already know we need fellowship with one another. But when we start trying to replace the Holy Spirit with mankind... Things begin to change. And if we try to replace the Holy Spirit with a robot, we should just have more common sense. I mean, pray for a spirit of common sense, will you please? Let's turn to Ecclesiastes. I love the book of Ecclesiastes. I'll tell you, when in Ecclesiastes 12, I remember when the Lord, the first time I had to read Ecclesiastes for 30 days, the first day I was depressed, then I got more depressed. With each passing day, it was one of my favorite books. Love Ecclesiastes. Love the book of Ecclesiastes. I just love the wisdom of, of Solomon and 
so many things. Ecclesiastes 12.10 Let's go to 9. Ecclesiastes 12, 9. And moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge, yet he pondered and sought out and set in order many proverbs. The preacher sought to find acceptable words, and what was written was upright words of truth. 11. These words of the wise are like goads, and the words of scholars are like well-driven nails given by one shepherd. The language of the Holy Spirit is the highway by which all things travel. All things created were spoken. There is nothing without the Holy Spirit existence in, in the realm of creation. When we begin to understand the language of the Holy Spirit and we begin to recognize how God speaks, I, I find it very sad when I hear people say, and I've heard and I read this in a book by a very well known, very, very well known pastor saying that it's spooky when people say that God wakes them up in the middle of the night to give them a word. What is spooky is to deny how God works. What is spooky is to deny that the Holy Spirit can reveal and speak at any given time. And what is even more spooky is to deny that that could even be a possibility. God doesn't work that way. Well, don't put that on me, but for you, you're correct. That's why you're living the life you're living. People say, well, God does, doesn't. I remember a pastor saying, God doesn't write big, or uh, people don't write big checks to, to ministries. I said, maybe not to yours, but they do to me. They do to this one. They do to Julie Bloom Ministries. And I receive it in the name of Jesus, and it gets, it gets put forth to do God's will. But you see, when, when we start denying the, the, the language of the Holy Spirit, and when we start denying how he operates, and when we start denying and putting boxes around the Holy Spirit, well, the Holy Spirit's only available 10 to 2 on Sundays. Well, praise God, that's not true, right? Oh, God only works in this way. Well, no, that's incorrect. It's our limited thinking that has only that level of operation. But going back to Romans 12, 2, renew our mind, get out of the pattern of the world, or even better, get out of the pattern of religion, get out of it, and realize that God is big enough and God is mightily able. We know when, when, he, that when he asked Barnabas, uh, Bartimaeus, what do you want? I want to see. He asked the, the blind. I love, I love the story in Matthew with the, with the two blind men chasing Jesus. Like, how'd they do that? Like, two, two blind men. Like, really? How? I just, I would love to meet them. Like, how would they even know where they're going? I mean, they're blind. How fast are they running? Do they got sticks? Are they running into other people? How, are they running into the ditch? Obviously not. So something must have been keeping them upright to even be running to chase Jesus to say, help us, heal us. Do you believe I'm able? Yes. And they will heal. Imagine that. Oh, well, healings aren't for today. Really? The Holy Spirit will say otherwise. Oh, miracle signs and wonders aren't for today. Go to a baby ward for crying out loud and you'll see uh, miracles are for today. Signs and wonders are for today. The Holy Spirit is for today. The language of the Holy Spirit is all around us. God can speak to us in any way, and our entire lives can change when we're led by the Holy Spirit. I find the book of, of Esther, and I'll be done in just one second, just a couple more verses. But I love the book of Esther. The word God is not even mentioned, but yet we can see the move of the Holy Spirit throughout the whole book. The whole book is so laid out. What a beautiful story. Of, of so much. I mean, I've taught on Haman and unforgiveness. Not that, I mean, how do you come to the forgiveness place? That would have been better. But, but looking at Ruth or, or Esther and how, how just one, one move changed her life and the life of, of all those provinces, 127 provinces would have been killed with the, with the Jews would have been killed there. So when we, when we start to examine the, the move of the Holy Spirit, we have to open up and, and stop the denying and, and walk in discernment. Holy Spirit, is this from you? 
and and don't just chase after the prophet liars because they're no different than the mediums stay away from the sorcery and the prophet liars and the prophets you know fit you know walk in a different way when we're holy spirit led holy spirit's our teacher he's the one that will provide the direction and and you begin to see the language of god throughout his bible throughout the word and how the holy spirit moves and how the holy spirit's always been there in your life and when you begin to open up to that revelation the holy spirit is there waiting to be in that relationship that that language it's 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 so powerful another way that we know that um the holy spirit is is always speaking is is in um hosea turn to hosea 7 8. now we know that the whole book of hosea is referencing israel who abandoned god to go and worship fake false gods now in 7 8 was where we'll start ephraim he hath mixed himself among the people. Ephraim is a cake not turned. Strangers have devoured his strength, and he knoweth it not. Yeah, gray hairs and here and there upon him, yet he knoweth not. When we turn from God, we're turning away from the Holy Spirit. We're shutting out his voice. We're shutting out what could be something beautiful. We're tuning out to tune in to something of our flesh or carnality that that will keep us more perverse and more more away from the power of God and of the Holy Spirit. When we have a heart turned toward the Lord and when we begin to welcome the Holy Spirit wherever we are in whatever we're doing, we'll begin to have a life that is transformed. I want to turn back to Romans. And then we'll be finished. Romans 1. Romans 1, 19. Start at 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. When we begin to turn away from God and live in unrighteousness, the truth will be suppressed. And we can see today's society where the unrighteous are doing every single thing that they can to shut down the word of God. And I just give God the praise and the glory for the mouth that he gave me to continue to proclaim his word. I will not be denied. The message will continue to go forth in strategic ways. And there is not one single thing that the enemy will ever do to me. My voice will be strong for all the days that I live as well as yours too. So you can continue to proclaim the goodness of his of his word but we continue on in 19 where i want to be because what may be known of god is manifest in them for god has shown it to them for since the creation of the world his invisible attributes are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and godhead so that they are without excuse How beautiful is that? I mean, it's already referencing back to everything that we've just demonstrated. The invisible attributes are clearly seen. When when you start to turn your mind toward Christ and you ask for that renewing of your mind, and it's renewing not just a one-time step, but it's a constant renewal. As you begin to overcome your, your mind and you begin to align yourself with God's word, it's not taking God's word and then and then tossing out what what your life doesn't look like I, I used to say oh i'm a proverbs 32 kind of woman and then and then it was like well maybe i might want to give that up and just follow god's word and things would be easier but when when we begin to recognize this there are all, all the invisible attributes are clearly made his his eternal power and godhead so that we're without excuse we we like to play ignorant and 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 ignorance is not an excuse it will not hold up in the, in God's court of law when you've got access to his whole book. <laughs> you cannot, you cannot, well, I didn't know that. Well, it's your responsibility to know that. 
I sat in a church for many years where they denied the, the Holy Spirit is for today, and they denied the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and they denied tongues. And, and when, I, when I started reading the Bible and started seeking, I started finding these scriptures that had been suppressed for so long. And in that, I was set free, but also I felt... I felt cheated because it was 18 years of my life that, that I could have grown in, in magnificent ways, but I had to overcome that and pray for wisdom and, and, and see that the Holy Spirit is, is always there. He's always operating. He wants to us to acknowledge him. And when we begin to get out of tune, we, our hearing starts to close out. We start to live more led by our flesh and our emotions and not by the, the leading of the Holy Spirit. You know, we we know that the Holy Spirit moves in in ways that we can't understand. And we know this because Peter knew who Christ was and he said so. And there's no way that he could have known without the manifestation of the Holy Spirit operating through him for him to to know that. So as we go forth, we we must get to a place of engaging with the Holy Spirit of welcoming him in our homes, in our schools, in our churches, in our places of worship, in our places of entertainment. Because when he's removed, we suffer the consequences of it. He must be welcomed. He must be invited in. And when we begin to understand his language, we are the ones that beget, get to be transformed. So I pray that as you go forth, that this is blessing you to engage with the Holy Spirit in a way that, that is so special, that is beyond anything you could imagine, and is the greatest gift that, that Christ left us with. And he, he died so that we could have all of that. that. It doesn't get any bigger than that. So Father, I thank you. I thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit. And Father, in Jesus' name, I pray over everyone who hears this message that they have an increase and earnest desire to know you, that they would just want to seek you, that they would want to seek your face, that they would just say, Welcome, Holy Spirit. And I ask, Holy Spirit, that you teach us to pray, that you teach us how to interact with you, that you teach us how to love, that you teach us how to stand upright in righteousness in your word, that you teach us how to fellowship with you and fellowship with others. I pray that, that you just teach us everything that we don't know. And I also ask, Holy Spirit, that you expose all frauds in our lives, all, all counterfeits, all false ideas about you, all false false teachings. Expose everything to us so we can remove it and enter into a new realm of a relationship with you. I pray, Lord, that my brothers and sisters are so blessed that their lives are transformed, that they're no longer operating in a pattern of the world or pattern of religion or a pattern of, of church, that they don't need to be in it, They need that, that we already are the church that we operate as one body and i pray that you teach us how to do this individually and collectively i give you the praise and the glory and i thank you for what you're going to do in to and through each one of my brothers and sisters and i thank you for the testimonies of the miracle signs and wonders that are to come forth as your full manifestation is flowing in us to us and through us and father i just pray all of this in jesus mighty name amen and amen He's just so wonderful. I guess I always do that when I and I pray that that you just that you just overwhelm today with joy that can only come from him. And and on this day I'm also commanded to invite you every Thursday. I have a live conference call and it's a teaching and and I invite you to join us. You don't have to do anything other than just pick up the phone and dial 214-586-0411. Have your Bible, have a pen, and just come expecting to receive from the Lord. We start at 8 o'clock on a Central Standard Time every Thursday night. 
and it's a Holy Spirit led word for you to grow doesn't matter if you already have a home church that's perfectly fine many do but if you're in the church if you're out the church if you left the church or, or the church for those that have left the church so to speak no games no religion just Holy Spirit led messages in love following Christ God bless you all love you so much we're praying for you and I look forward to to meeting each and every one of you one day as the Lord leads God bless you bye bye